have everybody. Uh, we just uh, had a blessed time of fellowship and Sunday school. If you're not coming for that, you're missing a blessing, let me tell you. Um, what announcements do we need to be made aware of this week? <coughs> Just a reminder that we will be having our CPW meeting this morning after church at 115 over at the Fellowship Hall. Okay. Don't forget the uh, yard sale. Yeah. We do need men. Okay. Not just women. Okay. And uh, can you pre-shop? Yes. You, <laughs> you can go down there right after church today and see what you can't live without. So the times are what? 7 to 1 is what time we, our yard sale. But please come at 6, be there by 6 on Saturday. And Friday, come anytime and just kind of make sure everything's still organized. We're going to put stuff outside. So pray that it doesn't rain. Yes, everybody pray. <laughs> and we need help with putting the stuff outside. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, do we need a reminder about the uh, golf tournament? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's changed. But we do still need um, hand drinks and drinks? Uh, gift cards. And gift cards. Ten dollar gift cards. Okay. And okay. teams. And teams. If you play golf, we better see you there. You're gonna get a gift card. <laughs> or if you know somebody who wants to be a sponsor. Okay. All right. Um, let me announce today, since I won't be here next Sunday or the next that the last Sunday of the month, we are having our fellowship meal. And it's also Memorial Weekend, so we'll have um, one of our own uh, doing something special for the service that day. So be in prayer. Any other announcements? <coughs> if you had noticed, be sure to notice the signs are finished. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. everybody see the signs? Yes. And I don't know if the lights got up yet, but they will be lit if they're not. Oh, yeah. There'll be solar-powered lights. And the Oh, and, and for those of us who have trouble doing deep knee bends, there's a new uh, accessible bathroom that's almost ready. And it's very accessible right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a story from the, the bathroom at one of the seminaries that's famous. It had three stalls, and the last one had no door. So it was 1 John, 2 John, and Revelation. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Uh, any other announcements? Any birthdays this week? Any anniversaries this week? I don't want to take away from Liz and Buford, but today is mine too. <laughs> here with us. Be with us, Lord. Be in this service and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
worship together responsibly from Revelation 7. I looked and there was a great multitude and no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And let us continue that same worship. Turn to number 82 and sing, Blessed be the name. Thank <laughs>
pray it doesn't rain Saturday. <laughs> taking us higher up and deeper into your kingdom, Lord. And forgive us, Lord, when we resist, when uh, we pull against your hand taking us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive us when we don't trust you enough to go. Forgive us, Lord, when we do things that don't please you, Lord. And forgive us when we don't do the things that we know would please you. Create in us clean hearts, Lord. Forgive us. Oh, Lord, thank you that we can bring these brothers and sisters before you, Lord, those who are grieving, those who are sick. And you, Lord, are so merciful. So we ask your comfort for the families of Will Oliver and Brenda Cox, Lord. And Lord, we ask for healing. And, and uh, we thank you for healing you have given. And Lord, help us not to be our own worst enemies, Lord, but help us to want to be healed, Lord. So we ask your blessing on all these, Lord. We ask for comfort and patience and strength, Lord, for Roger, for Worley and Christy, for Don and Janice, for Mariel and Randy, Bill and Ethel, Charles Raymond, for Donnie, Lord, for Stephen, for Phil, Lord. We ask for your mercy to, and your peace just to settle over Ukraine, Lord. For all those who are displaced by the war and those who are still in the middle of it, Lord, have mercy. Bring your peace, Lord. Soften hard hearts. And Lord, today, as we look into your word, would you use it to transform us, Lord? Would you plant seeds that have deep roots and grow and bear fruit for your kingdom? Because we are your children. We are your disciples. We are your followers. And so now we follow as Jesus taught us and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship. Turn to number 439 and say, I'll live for him. Is this your declaration today? Number 439. <laughs>
this time we'll receive our morning offering.
This follows after the story we heard last week. Last week? Gosh, time flies. Of uh, Saul getting knocked off his high horse, right? <laughs> but today we're going to talk about Peter in Acts chapter 9. But first, let's pray. And Lord, now we come and we look into your word. And we ask you to light it up. Lord, light up our hearts. Light up your word. Say what you want to say, Lord, and have us hear what you want us to hear. And let it transform us into the image of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Acts 9, 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, and in Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. And about that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. And Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was, once, was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. And Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. And all the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. And Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. And turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha Kum. And she opened her eyes. And seeing Peter, she sat up. And he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. And then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented them, her to them alive. And this became known all over Joppa. And many people believed in the Lord. And Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My friend Dusty Luthi, who spoke at last year's women's convention, we are seminary buddies, we struggled and cried together. She found herself testifying in a new way this spring. She was bearing witness to something not so unusual, very commonplace, yet one of those things that finds us surprised by delight. And she chronicled it on social media. And I found myself looking to see what the daily news might be as she shared pictures and videos and updates. Of all things, a mother duck had made a nest behind a bush at her church. And former sports writer, Dusty, gave the world the play-by-play. -play. And there came the day that the eggs were hatched and the most adorable baby ducks emerged. And the bittersweet part is that after all this relationship building each day and all the anticipation of wondering whether the mother and children were going to survive all the dangers and toils and snares and make it in this world, there comes a day when they depart. Mom waddling with her tail feathers, waving back and forth like a signal <coughs> flag to say, over here, follow me, over here. And four little yellow fluff balls marching in step behind. And it's a visual of the old saying we all hope to achieve, of having all our ducks in a row. Amen? <laughs> and about this same time, I heard our young licentiate who's leading over at Mount Denson, Brother Nathan Barnes, give an illustration in a session meeting, leadership training for elders, on how ducks learn to be ducks. Do you know how it works? Baby ducks learn to be ducks by following the mama duck and doing what she does. They imitate her. They are her disciples. They go where she goes. They do what she does. They eat when she eats. 
And when she rests, they rest. When she jumps in the water, they dive in after. All the ducks in a row. And so that is immediately what came to my mind when I read our scripture for today. Peter had spent a lot of time walking when Jesus walked, and eating when Jesus ate, and resting when Jesus rested, and praying when Jesus prayed. And in Mark 5, there's a story of a little 12-year-old girl, a little daughter, who is sick unto death. And so her dad comes to Jesus, and he says, please come at once. Jesus does. And when we say, please come at once, he does. And so it's also the story of another daughter <coughs> who reaches out and touches Jesus' robe in the crowd, thronging along with him as he's going to this 12-year-old sick child. And this daughter has been bleeding for 12 years. And Jesus stops the parade. He halts the 99 to speak to the one. And he makes sure that she knows that this healing is his gift to her, not something that she took. And then off they go. But by this time, the little girl has died. Jesus goes anyway. Death can't stop Jesus. <clears throat> he goes anyway. And they arrive. And when he says, life is there, the mourners laugh at him. They laugh. Do we ever do that? Jesus is telling us some part of life, some part of us we've given up on, life is there. And do we laugh? Or do we believe? Is anything too hard for Jesus? And for Peter, maybe that has been three years ago. But when he comes here to another upper room where Tabitha has just died, does that other story echo in his memory? Does it replay in his mind? Because that day, he followed Jesus, and because he watched, Jesus says something so simple. Yet can you imagine the impact when the one who spoke the universe into existence speaks? And there are some words that Jesus spoke that are just stamped in his followers' memories, imprinted in Peter's mind, and they get handed down to us in Aramaic just as they fell from Jesus' lips. What power there was issuing forth in his words when he reaches out his hand and says, Talitha kum. And now three years later, Peter is sent for. Please come. And he makes his way there. And these mourners don't laugh because the resurrection is now a reality. And it's not for someday, it's for today. It's for today. Peter reaches out his hand and says, Tabitha kum. It's no mistake and it's no coincidence. Disciples learn to be disciples by doing what their master does. How do we <coughs> imitate Christ? How do we walk in his steps and do what he does? How do we love like he loves? Well, one of my most cherished scriptures comes to mind. Philippians 2. Have this attitude among you, 
Have this same mindset as Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he emptied himself, made himself nothing, by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, emptied himself, became a servant, became obedient, and his obedience breathed life back into a dead world. And there's more. The writer goes on. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He made himself nothing and took on a servant's nature, and God has exalted him. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And we read that passage, picturing that in Revelation 7. We started our worship with that today. And when we follow Jesus, that's our destination, to be with him forever. Have that attitude. Wrap our mind around it. Wrap our lives around it. Walk where Jesus walked. And do what Jesus did. And then we'll be his followers. Not his fans. Not just people who talk about him, if we even do that. And not just people who admire him, but people who follow him. What does it look like? We see some good pictures here in our scripture. Tabitha. She's been a follower. It says she was always doing good and helping the poor. We know. We see that the widows are distraught at her death. She's been Jesus' hands and feet here in Joppa. It's what it looks like to be a follower. And Peter. Peter, who has had a transformation Peter, who once blustered his way through every delicate gospel situation, who denied the one he loved, who went back to fishing because he didn't know what else to do, is now boldly going, look at our scripture, boldly and amidst persecution, intentionally going around and encouraging the believers, teaching preaching. And just before this, he heals a paralytic man. He's following in the steps of Jesus. How did that transformation take place? Let me offer part of the answer. It's the same way our transformation takes place. Peter spent time with Jesus. Do we do that? Do we live some life with Jesus? Do we go to Jesus? Do we look to Jesus? Do we talk to Jesus? If in a friendship you have today, you spent as much time and gave as much attention, would you call that a friendship? Jesus calls us friends. Not only that, he's the bridegroom, and we are his beloved. Peter spent time with Jesus, and Peter followed 
Jesus. Peter put his life in gear in the same direction and on the same path as Jesus. Every day, every decision we make, the big ones and the small, either lead us on that path or away from it. And the last thing, we can't do it. Well, Pastor, didn't you just spend the last 10 minutes telling us to be followers? And now you say we can't do it? It's true. We can't do it. In our own strength and by our own ideas, we can't do it. That is why we have to go to Jesus and say, I can't do it, but you can. I can't do it. Will you please come? Will you do it in me? Through me? And he will. Let me close. It's like this. Last week, Al found a special bottle of grapefruit juice at the food pantry. I saw him walking by with this swollen, puffed out bottle headed for the trash. I said, oh, it's got the mother. I declared, and I discussed the benefits of probiotics for several minutes, but he shook his head, opened it, and poured it down the drain, verifying by the smell that he was right and I was wrong. <laughs> but if that had been apple cider vinegar, woo-wee, good stuff. The mother, it's all the living stuff in that concoction that makes it so good for us. <coughs> And trust me, I am right about this. And to make new probiotic batches, you need a little of that mother in the new batch. You need to pour that life into the new batch that's waiting to come to life. And that life gets in there and multiplies. And the Holy Spirit is like that. The living spirit is poured into us to bring us to life. So his goodness multiplies in us. His love multiplies in us. So we can be healing to others. So we can bring life to others. Like Peter here. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in a very dramatic way. And in a few weeks, we're going to talk about that and celebrate that again. And sometimes the Spirit fills us that way. A rush of wind, a flood of water, a flame. But most of the time, it's by six. It's by bites of daily bread. So, baby ducks, eat when you're led to the bread. When you're led to the water, drink deep. And by the love with which the Spirit fills you, dive in. Stand together as we close with freely freely. Number 517. This is our testimony. Let it be our testimony.
Would you open your hands to receive the benediction? Be filled with the Spirit and go and serve with love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>